This is an interactive explanation of Tetralogy of Fallot with pulmonary atresia and the process we use to correct it. You can start with some background on how the heart works, get some basics of this congenital heart condition, or skip to the way Stanford surgeons repair the hearts of these pediatric patients. Or you can go through them all. It only takes a few minutes. The heart is a pump at the center of the human circulatory system. It beats tirelessly, moving blood through a network of veins and arteries and delivering oxygen and nutrients to tissues and organs throughout the body. The circulatory system also returns blood from the body to the lungs where it can get a fresh supply of oxygen. The right side of the heart is on the left side of the screen and vice versa because the patient is facing you in this graphic. Blood that needs a fresh supply of oxygen arrives to the right side of the heart via the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava, the body's largest veins. As the heart beats, that blood gets pumped through the right atrium and ventricle and into the pulmonary artery, which leads to the lungs. The pulmonary artery is the big blood vessel that connects the heart to the lungs. Emerging from the right ventricle, it splits into two branches, one leading to each lung. These branches continue to branch into smaller and smaller vessels, which allow oxygen to more easily enter the blood in the lungs. The right side of the heart is in charge of pumping the blue, deoxygenated blood to the lungs, where it flows into very tiny vessels that allow the blood to absorb oxygen from the air we breathe. That blood becomes oxygenated, which we show as red, and travels back to the left side of the heart to get pumped out to the body. Red blood returning from the lungs pours into the left atrium. From there, it flows into the left ventricle and then into the aorta, the body's largest artery. The aorta brings red oxygenated blood up to the head and arms and down to the abdomen and legs. In a healthy heart, the left and right sides work in unison. As the heart beats, it pumps blue blood to the lungs to get more oxygen and red blood out to the body to bring oxygen to the tissues. These two loops of the circulatory system are separated, which helps the heart move blood very efficiently. In Tetralogy of Fallot with pulmonary atresia, the paths that the blood normally travels to get oxygen have gotten a little scrambled during fetal development, and blood has to take a different pathway to reach the lungs. In this part of the graphic, you'll get to see what the condition looks like and why it impairs circulation. In tetralogy patients, the muscle wall that separates the two sides of the heart doesn't form properly, which leaves a hole between the ventricles. We call that a ventricular septal defect, or VSD. The VSD allows blue blood to escape from the right side of the heart to the left, where some of it gets pumped out to the body without ever going to the lungs to be oxygenated. A patient whose tissues are getting oxygen-poor blood may have bluish skin or fingernails. The abnormal blood flow also means that parts of the heart don't develop as well as they should. One of those parts is the pulmonary valve, the door through which blood normally leaves the heart on its way to the lungs. But in pulmonary atresia, the pulmonary valve is completely blocked and the pulmonary artery never fully develops. That means blue, deoxygenated blood is forced to find a different path to the lungs. In these patients, blue blood reaches the lungs through extra vessels that branch off of the aorta. Every human embryo develops these vessels, called collateral arteries. As the fetus grows,
the vessels are normally replaced by the pulmonary arteries. But here, the pulmonary arteries are blocked, so the body keeps the collaterals long past the embryonic stage. They're the only way that blue blood can flow from the heart to the lungs, which is why collaterals are critical to the surgical repair process you'll see in the final section. With the pulmonary valve blocked, the right ventricle has to work extra hard to pump oxygen, poor blood, the long way, through the VSD and into the aorta. The extra work causes the muscle in the right ventricle to become enlarged or hypertrophied. The aorta is also a little out of position. It points too far toward the right side of the heart. When we repair the heart, we want to make sure it's better aligned with the left ventricle, the chamber from which it normally receives oxygenated blood on its way out to the body. In Tetralogy of Fallot with pulmonary atresia, the heart works less efficiently. Because the pulmonary artery is blocked, the heart has to push blood to the lungs the long way, out the aorta and through the collateral arteries. The procedure we do, called unifocalization, lets us rebuild a normal connection between the heart and the lungs. We do that by gathering up all of these collaterals and surgically combining them into a unified, functioning pulmonary artery. That way, the heart can pump blood directly to the lungs. But first, we need to find all of those collateral arteries. Days or weeks before the surgery, we bring the patient to the cardiac catheterization laboratory, or cath lab, where we use video x-rays to create a roadmap that helps us locate each one of these collaterals. Each patient is different. Some only have one or two collaterals. Others can have five or even more. So we really do need that map in order to plan the unifocalization surgery. We've created a simulation so you can see how unifocalization works by performing it yourself. In the operating room, the procedure can take more than 12 hours to complete, but you can do a simplified version here in a couple of minutes. Start by pulling one of the larger collaterals away from the aorta and attaching it to the blue-colored pulmonary artery above it. Sometimes the collaterals are a little small, so we make them bigger by sewing in some extra patch tissue. Grab one of the tissue patches and add it to the smaller collateral. Now, attach the enlarged collateral to the pulmonary artery above. Nice work. Now repeat the process with the two collaterals on the other side. Good, you've repaired the pulmonary arteries. Now they'll grow and strengthen over time, which will allow more blood to flow from the heart to the lungs. Once we've done the unifocalization, we do a test in the operating room to see if blood is flowing well and at low pressure through the newly reconstructed pulmonary artery. If so, we close that hole in the heart so deoxygenated blood can no longer escape to the wrong side of the heart. So grab the patch and close the VSD. The last step of the surgery is attaching the homograft conduit. The conduit is the tube that will connect the heart directly to the reconstructed pulmonary artery. So the right ventricle can pump blue blood straight to the lungs. Take the homograph conduit and attach it to the right ventricle.
Great job, doctor. Now that the surgery is complete, the repaired heart functions largely like a normal heart. The right side pumps blue blood to the lungs, and the left pumps red, oxygenated blood to the body. Successful unifocalization patients have a very good chance of healing up and having near-normal heart function and physiology.